How's it going, guys? Kevin Duty here. Welcome to Duty's Daggers. Hope you're having a nice, relaxing Sunday afternoon. We are doing a review today of an absolute legend in the knife world. Love it or hate it. Some people do. Some people love it. Some people are indifferent. And some people dislike this knife. Um, I personally like it. And um, I am... I don't know if I'm in the majority um, <laughs> of liking the bu uh, the bug out, but uh, well, you know, um, it's not for everybody. Um, it has its drawbacks, um, but in my opinion, this is a really good knife. So it's the Benchmade bug out. Um, just a quick overview before we get to the specifications and size comparisons. Um, this knife is not stock. Um, I have added these scales. I have added a backspacer, and I've added these. Uh, anodized uh, screws here. When you get this knife from Benchmade or from another retailer, <coughs> um, typically, I mean, they, they do sell some with aluminum scales, but the, just the base bug out has FRN um, scales, which are a, a kind of tough plastic, um, no backspacer, and, you know, just regular hardware. Um, that knife in that configuration is a much different knife than the one I'm holding in my hand right now. That base knife with the FRN plastic scales, um, in my opinion, is not a knife that I love. Uh, not nearly as much as I love this one, this version. And I'll go into that. Uh, you know, you know, I'll go into why that is here um, in a little bit after we do, the, you know, get the business out of the way. Um, but it is a just a really straightforward, really, really good design in my opinion. Um, there's a lot of really good things about this knife. So. Um, first, let's measure this thing. We have an overall length of seven and three eighths. Blade length three and an eighth, and a cutting edge of exactly three, pretty close to exactly three. Then we have a closed length of four, four and. Four and four sixteenths, or you know, four and a quarter, basically. Um, it's a thin knife. Let's see what we got here. We're looking at about three eighths of an inch. Um, you know, uh, as far as thickness goes. Um, let's do some size comparisons. This is a, a very medium-sized knife. Let's pair it up against another Benchmade, the Benchmade Griptilian. Can see that it's smaller than the Griptilion. Spyderco PM2. I'm moving this here a little bit. Spyderco PM2. The Demco AD 20.5. And then let's do the old Rat 2. Bam. And let's do the CVV Altus because it is a, a pretty comparable knife in size and just kind of general uh, aesthetic. Um, so there you go. It's a, it's a medium-sized knife. Um, so let's talk about this guy. Um, I think what I'm going to do this is first I'm going to kind of tell you what I think of the knife as it comes from Benchmade, just the base bug out with the FRN plastic scales. I'm just going to tell you what I think about that version of the knife first before I go into this version. So when you get it from bug out, or <laughs> when you get it from Benchmade, um, it is an extremely light knife. Um, very, very light. It's it's really kind of designed for, um, you know, backpackers, hikers, anyone who really, you know, they want a, a full size, you know, full four finger grip knife, three inch blade or three inch cutting edge. But they want it in a light package. Um, if you're one of those people, the base bug out is a really good knife for you. Um, the Efren plastic scales are they are durable, but you do have some flex when you are squeezing on the scales here. You can see them kind of bowing in a little bit, and that's just kind of a personal preference thing. That's not really affecting the performance of the knife. Obviously, this titanium is going to be quite a bit stronger, but you know you're not 
you know, it, it's a medium to light use knife, so you're not really going to be beating the crap out of this thing. Um, in the FRM Plastic Scale version, it's you're really not going to have any problems with it. Um, so if you, you know, if you're the kind of person that doesn't want titanium or doesn't need it, um, the base bug out is a is still a really good knife. Um, in my opinion, the the plastic scales felt kind of cheap. Um, it felt almost too light. You know, um, it just it felt cheap. It felt a little bit flexible, um, and I just didn't really like how it felt. I knew before I bought the bug out that I was going to end up replacing the scales eventually, and I did. These are the uh, titanium scales from Flytanium. I will link them down below. This is the crossfade version. Um, I just really like the, the milling that's going on here on the scale. Um, they have some kind of fine lines here that, that swoop down around the axis lock, and then it kind of tapers in here, um, and you have this, this nice texture here. Um, it's kind of nice if you're, if you're trying to hold the knife like this in kind of like a pinch grip. You know, it feels really good just to kind of get locked in right in here. Um, so I really like how these look. They also sell ones that are just non-contoured and flat. Um, I also put a backspacer in here. It's a copper backspacer. Um, that added a, a little bit of weight to it, not a whole lot, but, you know, it just made it feel more substantial in the hand. Uh, a little more tough and much more premium feeling. Much more pre premium feeling. Uh, in my opinion, this is a you know this is almost a completely different knife than the base bug out. It it feels absolutely different. Um, so let's talk about um, ergonomics. Very kind of neutral handle. We have a little bit of a, a finger groove here, not much of one. Um, just a very neutral handle, but it looks good. It's not just a rectangle. You know we have some nice contouring here at the back. You know up towards the front. It just uh, it's a really good looking handle. It's a really good looking knife all around. Um, I think this design is fantastic. It just it looks really good to me. Um, so it comes with a deep carry pocket clip um, that I actually really like. Um, it's small, it goes in and out of the pocket easily. Deep carry, you know, um, it's, it's a really good clip, to be honest, it's a, it's a very good clip. Um, I don't feel the clip very much at all, gripping the knife. Um, no choke up position, but you are you are pretty fairly close to the the edge there. Um, we have a little bit of jimping here that is actually on the liners, and that provides a little bit of traction. Not a whole lot, but it's there. Um, that's really the only jimping on the knife is right there. Um, the blade is uh, just a, just a really good looking blade, man. It's a drop point. We have uh, stone washing on the bevel here. We have a nice belt sander finish on the flat, and then we have a nice wedge here. And the stone washing on this blade is really nice. It's it's in my like top five favorite stone washings. Um, it, it they did a great job with the stone washing, especially with that high polished edge that I put on it. Um, this blade looks really really good. I love the blue accent um, on the thumb studs. Um, I added these uh, titanium. Uh, blue anodized hardware to kind of match that. Um, oh man, it just it looks really good. This was the first expensive knife that I ever bought. Um, it was early in my experience in the knife game, and it was kind of at the height of the bug out craze. Um, this knife was very very popular when it first came out, extremely popular, and um, I got caught up in the in the craze, and I, I knew I had to have one. It was my first experience with an axis lock. It was my first experience with anything besides a liner or frame lock, actually. Um, and just being able to close the knife so easily was a game changer for me. Um, you know, my whole life I had been, you know, having to put my finger here in the, in the cutting path of the blade to close my knives. And it was just a freaking game changer to be able to just bam, pop it down, easy, fast, super simple. Um, so, I mean, yeah, the axis lock is, is really, really good. And, you know, it's, its only downside is that, you know, what gives it its tension are these kind of um, wire springs in here. And they have been known to break on occasion. I actually did break 
Um, these, uh, both of them actually. Um, I've had this knife for probably five years and they've only broken once. Um, so it's not often at all. Um, some people's Omega Springs never break, ever. So um, it may never happen to you. It may happen once or twice, you know, in the whole life of the knife. Um, but it is something to be aware of. You can get replacement, replacement ones very easily. They're, they're cheap. Um, but it is something to keep in mind. Um, I, prob I would definitely not carry this knife into a survival situation um, unless I had a, another backup knife. Um, even if I was kind of thrust into a survival situation without being able to be prepared and I had this knife on me, that would be uh, in my mind that, you know, just worrying that, that these things would break. Um, if they did break, the knife is pretty, I mean, you could probably find a way to lock it open, but if one of these breaks, uh, this knife is um, not going to lock in place in the open position. Um, so the ergonomics, great, blade, great, um, overall aesthetic, very, very good. Um, action. Uh, this knife has very good action. You can see when I pull down the access lock, it completely free swings shut. Um, you can use the thumb stud to open it. You can do the reverse flick off of the thumb stud. Um, or you can just pull down the access lock and kind of flick it out that way. Um, now, I will say I have a little bit of blade play on this knife. I have not been able to tune this thing to where it's a you know free swinging blade, but also no blade play. I have not been able to achieve that. Um, on my Griptilian, also an access lock, I have been able to, to get that. And in, in fact, it just came like that um, from Benchmade. Totally solid lockup, totally free swinging blade. So I'm not sure why the bug out has that problem. I've heard of a few other people uh, over the years having that same problem with their bug outs. Um, but it really doesn't affect the performance of the knife at all. Um, it's just kind of annoying when you have a little bit of play side to side. Um, but I, I have learned to not let it bother me because I've accepted that there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, so that's, you know, that's a little disappointing. You know, you like, you know, you want your knives to be locked up solid, uh, how they're supposed to be. Uh, but aside from that, you know, very good action. Um, I really like how this thing snaps out with the thumb set action. Um, it just makes a good sound. It's pretty snappy for being an access lock. It just, uh, yeah, it's, it's great. Um, so, you know, it really comes down to, do you want to pay for the base bug out and then pay more for the skills that you want on it if you're planning on going that direction? And that's a dilemma um, for some people. You know, um, the base knife is over 100 bucks, I think like 140, somewhere around there. These scales are close to 100, I think maybe around somewhere between 60 and 80 bucks, I believe, for these scales. Um, you know, there are versions that are cheaper in Micarta, maybe, or G10. Um, so it ends up being um, close to a $200 knife or more, uh, depending on what type of scales that you upgrade to. Do I think that? This knife in its version now is worth 200 bucks. That's a tough one. Um, I mean, you have to really like the design and the overall knife to want to do that. You know, um, if this design, if you know, if the if the whole design and and everything speaks to you and you love how this looks, like I do, it's worth it to me. But it's not going to be worth it to everybody to pay that much to have, you know the the bug out that you want to have um, so it's not for everybody you know some people you know some people think that the the base bug out with the plastic scales is just a, a crappy knife and uh, the fact that you need to pay up to get it how you want it is um, you know is a a, a no-no not a, not a no-no but like they're not gonna do it it's not worth it to them to me I think it is. I really like this knife. It just looks good. I know I've said that a couple times, but this is a very good looking knife. Um, just kind of a classic looking knife, you know? There's nothing frilly or fancy about it. 
but there are some elements of it that kind of make you think, wow, that's, um, it looks simple, but it actually is kind of complicated. Um, you know, it's just, uh, I, I think the bug out is a, a really good knife. So it really comes down to what do you value in your knives? What are you willing to pay for in those knives? And if you want this knife, you can put it together exactly, exactly what you see here. Um, you know, you are going to have to spend a little bit of money to do it, but you will be able to get this. And I love this knife. I carry it all the time still. All the time. So, um, that's the Benchmade bug out. If anyone has any questions about it, leave a comment. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Adios.